Hey guys, it's Jade here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about what I did to get my senior software engineer title, which I've only just recently got. I got it on the 1st of March. I found out about 10 days prior and was really, really excited just to share with everyone what it is that I did to become a senior software engineer. So without further ado, let's get into it. Before we get into it, I just want to do a quick disclaimer to say that if you do these things as a tick box exercise that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get that senior software engineer title i did these things because i really really believe that these are good qualities of a good software engineer but if you do them just to tick a box it doesn't necessarily mean that you will get that senior software engineer title so now that disclaimer is out of the way let's get into it so the first thing that i did was i focused on delivering value fast and what i mean by that is i tried to understand what was the high value items for the customer what was the high value items and pain points for the team and I focus my efforts on those. My skill set is being able to take very very difficult problems and break them down into smaller problems which you know is just the I guess skill sets of being a software engineer and so I really really owned in on that to try and understand what the core problems are and try to focus on maximizing my impact of okay these are the things that i need to deliver first to get high value items out to get strong impact for the customers that we're working with the second thing that i did was i started to architect and design the systems that i was doing and so for example if i was going to do an authentication flow i would design what the authentication flow is going to be if i was doing a database design i would design the database i would design the system flow of okay this is how we're going to get data this is how the data is then gonna go off and get sent to another part of the system just so that my team members could see what I was thinking that we could deliver and how we could deliver it and I believe by designing the features that I worked on this meant that I could bring the team along with me rather than just doing it by myself because it meant that okay now we've got the design if we break this out into tasks then I can take one section another person can take another section and again it was all about focusing on the impacts that that would give to not just me but to my team members as well the third thing that I did was I owned it on my previous backlogging experience so before I joined Microsoft I had been a product owner slash business analyst in a couple of the roles that I've been in and and this means that I had a lot of experience with taking requirements and putting them into user stories and breaking them down in a very agile way and adding appropriate acceptance criteria, mock-ups of the UI and things like that. And there was a gap within our team for a while where we were without a TPM, which is a technical project manager, because our previous TPM had retired and we had a gap for a while. And so I was really able to step into that role and just basically add those requirements that really helped again focus on the team impact. The fourth thing that I did was I really really focused on pushing the principles that I really really care about such as clean code testing and continuous integration and continuous deployment and I think the biggest impact that I had in this area was with the automated testing and continuous deployment because those things I really really care about and I think are really really important in creating a a maintainable and stable system and so whenever we started a new project I really made sure to have a focus on okay if we are doing automated testing this is how we get them set up and this is how we can um, easily refactor things. I wrote them in a way that made them easy to refactor. For example I implemented the unit of work and repository pattern after quickly realising it was the best thing to implement for our current design and because of the way that I've written the test something that it was actually quite a lot of code changes to refactor actually from a testing point of view meant that it only took an hour to refactor the actual full thing because the tests covered the um, cases of when of moving the various different parts of the system around and so something that if you didn't have tests would have probably taken at least a day or, or two days to refactor and then you would have to keep retesting actually only took an hour to refactor because i'd already put all those tests in place and i only needed to test manually once 
after doing the, the changes that I needed to do. The final thing that I did was I got involved with the, so we had these things called working group ensemble teams where you are given a initiative to resolve and you work together with a group of individuals to get them done. And so we as a ensemble team, we work together to create things such as bake off days when we all went into the office, sync days, which basically allowed us to come together and collaborate as part of a department and it was all about just creating a community of individuals in our department that interacted with each other and so getting involved with things like that really helped I think. And that's everything that I did. I'm really pleased with the outcome of this because I got hired in September 2022 and I went on maternity for six months shortly after. So I've only really been hired for about a year before getting this promotion and my boss put in the promotion a few months ago and so it's really nice that he saw that I was doing more than he thought a software engineer to usually does and he really really vouched for me and pushed for me to get the promotion and so I'm really really pleased and I'm so happy to be working for Microsoft and I really hope that you found this video useful and if you feel like you're doing things like this yourself just continue to keep doing it and continue working with your manager to see what it is you need to do to get to that next level. If you like this video please can you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I post weekly content on my YouTube and on my blog and I also post daily content on my LinkedIn. Thank you for watching, see you next week.